Right, okay, this video is going to just take you through creating a basic tile map driven by a text file. So for my purposes, I'm just going to create this in the title screen. Um, so I'm going to start off and I'm just going to create the tile map class. No, I'll just call it map. Uh, right, if it does that, just make sure you press escape and then you can put your name in that doesn't exist. Right, now the way I'm going to make this work is I'm going to pass it the file I want to load. Okay, we don't have to do it this way, but this is, makes it more flexible if you do this. Um, so I'm going to need a file. I'm not put it in yet, I'll just put and pass in a string. And I'll sort out the file in a sec. So I'm going to create this class by just doing control full stop and say generate a class. So that'll create the map class, which you can see it's opened up as well. Now we want this to be a tile map. So we're going to say tile map. It won't know what that is, but it actually knows if we do control full stop, it knows that it's part of the engine. So it'll include the namespace for me. Right, all these things it's created because it's guessed we don't need. So we'll get rid of that field and we'll get rid of that and we'll change this parameter to uh, map data. Okay, so we'll come back to that. We need to create the map now. So I'm going to create that in the same folder. So I'm going to go right click over title and then say add new item. It'll process and generate the template picker. And I just want a text file, so I'm going to go on the general tab, scroll down to text file, and then give this a name. So I'm just going to call this level1.text. And you'll see it's created that. Now, <clears throat> we need to make sure that this is copied to the object directory so that we can load it from the executable. So we're going to right click on that and say properties. And then we're going to say copy if newer. Okay, so always make sure it's in the output directory okay now the basic format i'm just going to do a simple time up there's three pieces of information that we need to include um, but anything that starts with a semicolon is ignored so we can put some comments so level one map layout we start with a list of tiles and the tiles are just characters so i'm just going to have four characters in this so i'm going to have x representing a wall dot representing a floor s represent the start place of a player and e representing start of an enemy so we can position them on the map okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put uh, comments in there just so i know what those are so x is a wall uh, i'm also going to put zero because it's the positions that matter dot is a floor um the next one was s that was player start uh, that's position two and e is going to be enemy spawn point and that's the three <clears throat> i then need to decide how big my tiles are going to be how wide an eye each tile is that's not the size of the map that's determined from what we put data we put in but just the size so i'm going to go for uh, 32 by 32 okay so I'm just going to put a comment above that and say each tile 32 wide 32 high I'm then going to put the actual map structure so I'm going to put another comment and you can put as many comments as you want in here and blank lines are ignored as well right now we're going to build the level so I'm going to put characters where I want these different types of tile so i'm going to put a wall around the outside so i'm just going to do a load of x's i don't know how big this is so i'm just going to do that and then i want to put a wall and then a load of floors so i'm going to put those in and then i want loads of that i'm just going to have an empty maze to start with so just going to put a load of these in And then I'm going to put just a finishing border. Now, I'm going to put in where the player starts and where the enemies start. And that was the S and the E's. But 
if I start typing S's, it makes it wider and it inserts characters. So I'm actually going to press the insert key, uh, which puts it in overtype mode. And you can see down here, it says overtype. And that will let me put things in without adjusting it. It just overwrites the character it's on, which is the only time this is ever useful. Okay, so I'll turn, press... Um, overtime mode off by pressing insert again right so that's the map i'm going to load so if we go back to the title setup and just put that data in so we'll just give it the path so the path is going to be title then you have to put two slashes because it's an escape sequence to mean backslash and then we need to put the full name of the file we want to load okay so that's the setting up of it um, I've just got to throw something. Thank you. Um, right. Okay. So back to the tile map. So I'm going to say gm .tilemap manager add this. So I need to indicate to the tile map manager that I want this tile map to be managed. If I don't do that, it will not be drawn or updated or anything. The next thing I'm going to do is load the data. So I'm going to say load from string file because that's the type of file we've created and we're just going to put the parameter that we've got to give map data what i then need to do i haven't got much more to do but i have actually defined some tiles now in when you do your game properly you'll create your own textures for these squares but what i'm going to do is create some dummy ones so i'm going to create a method um, called create tiles Obviously, you can call this whatever you want. It doesn't exist, so I'm going to say control full stop, press enter, and it will create it for me. And then what I'm going to do is just going to build up my tile list. Now, I've got four separate tiles, so I need to define four tiles. Okay, so go back to my map. So I'm going to say my tile list, which is where it exists. So say new tile it's just an array of tiles so we just define an array like this and then we just define each tile so we say new tile um, and we want a texture for this so we're going to use text dot rectangle 50 by 50 um, and then we need to specify what portion of that texture so when you do your proper ones you'll have a texture with all your tiles on it and then you'll be able to say right well I want that texture that's there that texture but I want only a bit of it so I'm going to specify the rectangle now for this and again it doesn't doesn't know this exists yet so it's moaning because I have it included so I'm going to say using XNA framework there is an easy way of doing it if you just go to the top of one of the other ones and just say drag all the usings and just copy them to the top that's the easy way and the ones that are in light grey, they're not being used. So eventually you can delete them. Um, but that, that just saves it moaning about everything. So I want this rectangle. So uh, if you look at the definition for rectangle, we've got an X position, a Y position, a width and a height. So we, we've just got a white rectangle here. So we're just going to say no, no. So top left hand corner. The width we have got defined because it's been read by the tile map is tile width and the height is tile height. Okay, uh, and the final parameter we might want to put in there is a colour, so the tiles look different. So these are just placeholders, really. So we're going to say colour dot, and this is a wall, so I'm just going to have grey. And then I'm going to put a comma at the end. So I just need four more. So they're all going to be identical except the colours. So I've just copied and pasted those. So floor, or oh, I don't know. Um, I might. Uh, what colour shall I? I always. Struggle. I'll make it brown, so it's like mud. I don't know what colours these are. Saddle brown, whatever the hell that is. Um, right, the player start position I'm going to make yellow. And the enemy start position I'm going to make red. Okay, so let's just review what we've got. So, <clears throat> uh, in my title screen where I'm doing this test, to just show you how it is, I've done, right, generate a new map, pass it this level data. I created my level by just adding a text file which just looks like this it's got 
a list of tiles if you put a character that doesn't exist in there you'll get a, an empty tile which allows you to see the background through um, I put some comments in semicolon for comments uh, I've said that the tile is 32 by 32 and then I've displayed my map okay in map I'm taking the parameter to text and I'm just saying this load map from string file I must make sure I add the tile map and then I'm running the method create tiles which just defines four tiles if I don't put enough in I'll get an error and I'll show you that in a sec right so theoretically this should work so let's just see what this looks like by default the tile maps are set in the top left hand corner of the screen okay so you can see there you can't see I've got an outline because I've got actually a great background so what I'll do is I'll just change the background color to black so we can see that so that's just in title let's just set the color to black run it again and you can see that we've got a gray border which is where the walls were we've got red blobs red tiles where the uh, enemies was going to spawn and a yellow tile where the player is going to spawn and I'll um, show that in another video okay so that's just a basic timer obviously it looks better if you spend some time and put your characters in and define your tiles